Hello, my name is Sanjay, and today I'll be talking about IBAN economic activity. The primary activity of a majority of IBAN is rice farming. In the hills, farmers practice wide cultivation of fields, averaging one hectare. Each family maintains its own seed bank of rice and plants between one dozen and two dozen varieties in a year. At the center of its fields, they plant their sacred rice, a gift of some spirit to an ancestor, which has been retained over generations to recall the origins of that family. Given the uncertainties of rice farming in the hills, dozens of ritual acts are performed to ensure a successful crop. In addition to rice farming, farmers plant gourds, pumpkins, cucumbers, maize, and cassava. Rice is complemented with a variety of jungle vegetables and fruits by collection of men and women for consumption with the evening and morning meals. Fishing has provided the principal source of protein in the Iban diet, but logging and the consequent slitting of many streams and rivers have greatly reduced the number of fish. Iban women are great weavers using the backstrap loom. Most men are skilled in the use of piston bellows. In addition to weaving blankets and other cloths, women weave mats and baskets. Iban collect bamboo and rattan for their own use or for sale. Natural rubber which is available about every fourth year are, al are also important collectibles. Ironwood, sawed as logs or cut as poles, is also becoming increasingly scarce. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Fu from DC70. Today I want to talk about the Iban economics activity. So, the Iban grow for crop fish as cassava, pumpkin, and vegetable, raise crash, crop like paper and cocoa, and collect fruit from tree. Fishing is done with crack, net, and line and hook. Well big deer and other animals are hung with dog track and nets. Almost all families keep pig and chicken. Every longhouse has dog, chicken, pig and water buffalo are raised for sacrifice. So now, this day many Iban men work in logging camps or on rubber for plum oil plantation. Some work for oil companies, others are as traders. Other work independently taking rubber and collecting return. Many have gone to the search of salary job. Some Iban men extra cash have putting up tourists in their longhouse and performing so-called hit hunter dance to drum and gongs. Thank you everyone. boarded a long-tail boat, speeding our way through the still waters of the lake and river systems, where the deep jungle greens cascade down to the water's edge. We arrived to the jungle hideaway of an Iban longhouse, and after Winston received our invitation, we climbed upstairs to see the village lifestyle. This is a typical Iban longhouse that you can visit when you come to Sarawak, a whole village under one roof. And there are 14 families living here, 95 residents in all. And this is the communal veranda where the daily activities of the group take place. And behind these walls, the private quarters of the 14 families. No. Okay, so as we know, about, uh, I'm going to continue Joshua's presentation. So we're talking about the continuation of the Iban, Iban society structure, which is
we're going to regionalism. Deriving from these alliances, from the same areas in which Japan distinguished themselves from others allied group. So they are, in this case, they are different. They're making themselves very unique from other tribes. Persist in the modern state politics. Essentially, egalitarian. Iban are aware of long-standing status distinctions among themselves, recognizing the Raja Brani, the wealthy and brave, which is like the upper class in, the, in their Iban society. Mencia Saribu, the commoners, which is the middle classes, the, uh, the one who able to buy enough wealth for themselves, and Ulun, the slavers. For example, like the housemates, the helpers for kitchens in the longhouses. Prestige with still accrues to descendants for the first status, for, for the first status, disdain to descendants of the third. So these privileges will go through as the, this prestige will go through on the Iban society to the to the next generation onwards. Thank you and that's all. Hi, today I'm going to talk about the society structures of the Iban. Each longhouse, in Malay translation as each bilik, is an autonomous unit. Traditionally, the core of each house was a group of descendants of the founders. So means the houses can go up to 100 to 50 years old house. The structure itself, it is very big and long. So houses near one another, or on the same river, or just in the same region, uh, the same region or area, uh, were commonly allied. They do gathering themselves or together. They marry among themselves. Uh, they perform raids together and beyond their territories. And they always try to resolve disputes by peaceful matters because these are their neighbors. And then they usually would coexist to form a society in the Iban tribe. We were then entertained in traditional Iban style, dance routines in full costume, to the accompaniment and rhythms of the village brass band.